It's Law of Log Thursday. And this week's question, did you know that ginger ale does not contain any ginger? What? Yep. And Fruit Loops don't contain fruit? Why? Oh. I that because it's pretty obvious. It's just sugar. It is Law Vlog Thursday, and as part of this investigative journalism, we are going to the store now to buy a real can of ginger ale to see exactly what's going down with this story about the lawsuit against ginger ale. Hello, doggy. Okay. Oh, and, can, Daddy, yep. can I like drink it in the background? Like... We're not advertising for ginger ale. We're not. Unless they pay us. David at vivafry.com. My P.O. box information is below. Yeah, okay, seriously. Watch out, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a red light yet. Um, so as you all may have known, there's a lawsuit against Canada Dry Ginger Ale because apparently ginger ale does not contain ginger. As advertised. I, we just watched the ad literally. Well, they will, have just, they will have just watched the ad by the time we get, now let's flash the ad Wait. right now. Ginger, real taste, real uh. Back to the video. Okay, wait. Yep. And we had just shown, probably we had just shown, I don't know, um, the part where it says, real ginger, real taste, that's false advertising. Well, so this is the question. My initial reaction was to say that this is another frivolous lawsuit along the lines of Fruit Loop lawsuit because Fruit Loops, oh. spelled F-R-O-O-T, don't contain real fruit. Apparently the lawsuit is on the basis that it does not contain real ginger as advertised. And that it actually, yeah, it, it actually only contains minuscule amounts of ginger extract. The lawsuit is uh, currently pending, so we will not have any resolution to this. But let's dive into it a little more. Ah. Bam, 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 bam. All right, it's closed. Hi, David. How are you? Good to see Horn is very annoying. Let's talk about another law uh, issue. Public nuisances from honking your horn unnecessarily. <laughs> Fruit Loops. The judge on, it was not just one occasion, on two or three separate occasions said that Fruit Loops, spelled F-R-O-O-T, is not reasonably susceptible of causing a normal person to think that it contains fruit. It's that, sugar! Forget that part. Mixed together, meat and strength. That, it's oh, delicious. that that's, that's the other part. The judge also said that fruit doesn't come in loops, so no one's going to think that these are loops made of fruit. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. It's raining. It's raining. Fait à partir de vrai gingembre. That's French for made from real ginger. Let's get two. Hmm, vitamin water. This better be made from real vitamins. Okay, we have just blown our budget for this for this video. Uh, it, we just invested thirteen dollars in this experiment. Eight dollars of it was a lottery ticket. So. <laughs> Because we're gonna win uh, ten million dollars. Oh yeah, we're gonna win ten million dollars. Um, okay. Now we go home and we analyze the evidence. Made from real ginger, 100% 100% natural flavor. Ingredients: carbonated water, sugar, glucose, fructose, you have citric acid, sodium benzoate, color, natural flavor. I don't know what ginger tastes like. Now the question most of you are asking yourselves are, this lawsuit is stupid. What damages does anyone suffer if it doesn't contain real ginger? Here's the thing about false advertising. It doesn't necessarily need to cause damages because by its nature, it doesn't necessarily cause damages, but it is still a statutory infraction. What are you guys doing? Drinking delicious ginger ale. There may be consumer damages if someone buys something and pays more for it on the basis of false advertising, but if someone buys ginger ale on the basis that they don't even know that it doesn't not have real ginger in it, what are their damages? There aren't any real damages, but there's still false advertising for which there are statutory penalties provided for by law to punish companies for making false advertising to make their college products more alluring to the general public. Yeah. Ooh, you I'm getting my thumbnail. You gotta get it with like a backdrop there so that you can put some writing on the caption for the thumbnail so that it's catchy for the people who are surfing through videos looking for something interesting. 
to watch. There it is. I got it. Nailed it. All right, there's really not necessarily going to be enough to this particular issue to make for an entire vlog. A lot of you are probably thinking this is a ridiculous, frivolous lawsuit representative of the overly litigious American society. You may be right and you may have a point. That said, to play devil's advocate, there are laws. Some lawsuits are frivolous on their face. Others are a little bit more nuanced. Okay, now when anybody thinks stupid American litigation, they think of the McDonald's lawsuit where an old lady was allegedly driving with a cup of coffee between her legs, it spilt and gave her third degree burns all over her groin, and she sued and actually won partially uh, in that McDonald's got sentenced to punitive damages for the wrongful act. And people look at this lawsuit, they say, this is a system gone mad, this is stupid frivolous litigation, how does anyone succeed on such a claim? I think the lighting is pretty bad here, let me just rotate the camera around. People need to appreciate that law is a set of facts. This particular McDonald's had received something like 700 complaints of injuries because their coffee was excessively hot. Not just hot, but actually hotter than boiling water. They had received 700 complaints of injuries from their hot coffee and did nothing to change it. The woman initially was only suing for her medical fee, something like $20,000. McDonald's never offered more than 800. Where the woman was held to be partially responsible for the damages she suffered, McDonald's got slapped with punitive damages for not responding to the hundreds of complaints that they had gotten from their excessively, disproportionately, over-the-top hot coffee. Now, I ask you, is the lawsuit frivolous? What? Do you think the lawsuit's frivolous? No. No. He said no. The jury has spoken. Good boy. Yes. Oh! More importantly would be that if you do not like, share, and subscribe, you will be violating the tacit agreement that we have that if you watch this video and like it and don't like, share, and subscribe, that is false representations on your behalf to me as a um, viewer of the YouTube and the interwebs um, and all that is holy in the world of YouTube. This is my life. Are you indicating that you would like some water? That is a smart dog right there! Oh my good god! Oh, hi there. Uh, didn't see it. Uh, thank you for joining us for this vlog. Uh, we've had some fun. We've learned some facts. I do want to end it on a semi-serious note. Most people have no appreciation for what a lawsuit is. Lawsuits contain allegations. They don't contain facts. Now, we say allegations of fact. An allegation is not a fact until a judge says it's a fact. You have your plaintiff, the claimant, the petitioner, whatever the name is in your jurisdiction, who alleges a bunch of allegations. On this day, X did Z to Y. Then you have the defendant, the respondent, who will then retort with their allegation, which say, I did not do this, I did not do that, they did this, they did that. Allegations are not facts until a judge says, here are the allegations, and this is what I conclude to be the facts. You have judge and you have jury, depending on your jurisdiction, depending on the type of lawsuit and whatever. When the jury says, these are the facts, plaintiff alleges that the coffee was 170 degrees. Defendant says it was 130. 30 degrees. We, based on the evidence, conclude that the coffee was 170 degrees. Yay, plaintiff. That's a fact at that point. It becomes a juridical fact. Allegations become fact only when the judge or jury determines what the facts are. Which is why there's a rule that your allegations should be short and concise and clear. A lot of lawyers don't respect that. A lot of lawyers don't adhere to that. And they have convoluted one-page allegations which are so confusing, it's difficult to determine even what they're trying to get at. How do you prove a fact? You make an allegation in a paragraph on X day something happened. How do you prove it? Witness testimony, documentary evidence. Allegations have to be supported by evidence. So the coffee was 170 degrees. How are you going to prove it? Get an expert report. Get a thermometer. Get a picture of a thermometer in the coffee showing that it was 170 degrees when it spilled on the woman's lap. Then, if you have a photograph, how do you admit the photograph as evidence? You have to have the person that took the photograph to testify on the date and time that they took the photograph. These are all the rules, the procedural elements, the complexities that come into actually proving an allegation. It sounds fun. And for those of you who like it, God bless and have a happy life being a lawyer. It's soul crushing because you can spend a week, you can spend a month, you can spend a year drafting proceedings, alleging fact. You can try to prove them through photographic evidence, through testimonial evidence, and a judge at the end of it all can say, I don't believe your witness. Then, what fact have you proven? Love log? 
there are gonna be tons of frivolous, stupid lawsuits because you can't prevent people from suing people. That's the freedom of living in a free society. If you think someone is wronged, you sue them. If you think God has punished you, sue God. It happened, look it up, it's crazy. Dismissed, obviously, but it still happened and made the newspaper. But oftentimes what is reflexively dismissed as a frivolous lawsuit actually has some complexity to it at the factual level once you get past the headline. The McDonald's lawsuit is a prime example. Uh, the ginger ale example is kind of interesting. Like, I consider myself to be reasonably intelligent. I thought ginger ale had real ginger in it at a above extract level. I thought ginger ale was good for your stomach when you have a stomach cake. I always told the kids, drink ginger ale when you have an upset stomach. So the headline says it's frivolous, everyone's laughing at it. I don't think it's so frivolous, especially when the commercial says made with real ginger. Okay, boom, that's it. Uh, peace out.